She has to eat the whole heart. Hope that wasn't my horse. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times Game of Thrones went too far. Your Grace! Happy name day, Your Grace. My name day is past. We won't tell if you won't. For this list, we're going over the events from the fantasy series Game of Thrones that were so upsetting, violent, or disturbing that fans had to look away. There will be spoilers throughout. Also, we won't be including moments from House of the Dragon, otherwise that birth scene would definitely be on here. If there's a Thrones moment that had you losing your lunch, put us off our appetites in the comments. Number 20. The Death of Rickon you could probably count the number of lines Rickon Stark says during the entire show on one hand. The youngest Stark child just doesn't have a lot going on. He's absent from the show for several years, and unfortunately, when he does return, it's as a captive of Ramsay Bolton. Let's play a game. Run to your brother. John and Sansa go to war over their brother's captivity. Tragically and naturally, Ramsay shoots Rickon with an arrow through the heart after he's released towards the opposing army. No, you have to run, remember? Those are the rules. Granted, Rickon's presence in the books isn't that much bigger, but he does have a subplot brewing involving Davos of all people, and it's a shame the show couldn't bring it to life. Number 19. Ramsay feeds his stepmother and brother to dogs. When it comes to upsetting moments, Ramsay Bolton is going to make our list several times. While this bastard gets legitimized by his equally terrible dad, Ramsay still feels threatened when his new stepmother Walda has a son. After killing his father, Ramsay decides to pay her a visit. <laughs> Him holding his infant brother is enough to make anyone's skin crawl, but he proceeds to lure Walda into the dog kennel. Where is no Bolton? Walda realizes what's going on and offers to leave, but Ramsay still releases his hounds to attack her and the baby while he watches. It's not the first death of a child in the show, but it is easily the most upsetting. I prefer being an only child. Number 18. Sir Roderick's Beheading Theon Greyjoy's betrayal of the Starks is upsetting for everyone involved. Ned Stark's war draws most of Winterfell's forces, led by Sir Roderick Castle, away and takes the fortress. After Roderick is brought back, he spits in the face of the traitorous Theon. My brothers are dead. They died fighting Stark men. Men like you! Aye, they died fighting the war your father started. When Theon's men insist he kill Roderick, Theon reluctantly does so. God help you, Theon Greyjoy. Now you are truly lost. While Bran's pleading for Theon to stop makes the scene traumatic enough, what's worse is that Theon botches the beheading. Although we don't see the act in detail, the fact that he has to hack away at a man's neck and then kick his head off the rest of the way is disturbing enough in concept. Number 17. The Death of the Night King While Game of Thrones lacks an overall antagonist, many would argue that the Night King is the closest we get. The leader of the White Walkers proves terrifying, like a force of nature personified. Even in his final outing, he shrugs off Dragonfire like it's nothing. When he's faced with Bran Stark and all hope seems lost, Arya comes leaping out of the darkness with her famous dagger drawn. The Night King stops her, but she drops the blade into her other hand and sticks him with it, killing him and all the White Walkers in a single blow. move, but ultimately, many found it unsatisfying after years of buildup for such a huge antagonist to die in the blink of an eye. Number 16. Peeling the Grayscale Jorah Mormont has a rough go of things. 
as if having unrequited feelings for a queen isn't enough. He also contracts grayscale, a nasty magical disease that gradually turns the infected to stone. How long? Could be years before it kills you. Could be 10, could be 20. Luckily for Jora, he goes to Old Town, where Samuel Tarly is studying to be a maester. Sam decides to attempt a procedure that will cure Jora's grayscale. If you wouldn't mind, bite down hard. The only problem is that it's incredibly painful, risky, and frankly, gross. It involves removing the top layer of stony skin. And while we don't see much of it, what we do see is enough to make us avoid this episode when we're eating. <laughs> Number 15, Jamie leaving Brienne. Jamie Lannister's most defining relationships are arguably with his sister Cersei and with Brienne of Tarth. After the battle with the Night King, he and Brienne finally get together. Unfortunately, their pairing is all too brief. I've never slept with a knight before. I've never slept with anyone before. Then you have to drink. Those are the rules. I told you. When Jaime hears that Daenerys is unlikely to spare his sister, he decides to rush to her aid in King's Landing. His departure from Winterfell sees him play the heel and break Brienne's heart. Even if you don't think that's out of character, it's still awful to see her so upset. But at least the payoff was worth it, right? She's hateful. And so am I. <laughs> Number 14, Joffrey tortures Roz and Daisy. When the showrunners of Game of Thrones adapted the material to the screen, they sometimes added new scenes. Some of them were welcome and improved the source material. This one was not. Happy name day, Your Grace. My name day is past. We won't tell if you won't. In an effort to get his monstrous nephew to chill out, Tyrion sends Joffrey, Roz, and Daisy, two sex workers. For most teenage boys, this would be a dream come true. But because Joffrey is a deranged monster, he instead forces Roz to abuse Daisy, possibly to death. Hot. He'd want me to get his money's worth. Fans already knew Joffrey was one of the vilest characters in history, so this scene just felt like overkill. Harder. Number 13, Cersei torments Ilaria and Tyene. If Joffrey's the apple, then Cersei's the tree. Upon the capture of Ilaria and Tyene Sand, who were responsible for the death of Cersei's daughter Marcella, she takes great pleasure in her revenge. She was mine and you took her from me. Why did you do that? Chaining them up beneath the Red Keep, she gives Tyene a poisoned kiss, just as Ilaria did to Marcella. Clever enough to learn what poison you used to murder Marcella. A long goodbye, was that it? A long farewell. That's the one. Cersei goes into explicit detail, claiming that she will force Ilaria to watch as her daughter's body rots in front of her, not even allowing her to die to escape it. Although not as graphic as some moments, the image Cersei paints is profoundly disturbing. Your daughter will die here in this cell. And you will be here watching when she does. You'll be here the rest of your days. If you refuse to eat the false food down your throat, you will live to watch your daughter rot. Number 12, Robin breastfeeding. Look at him, the lord of all the Vale. After taking Tyrion as her captive, Lady Catelyn Stark seeks shelter at the Eyrie, home of her sister Lysa Arryn. The Lady of the Great House greets her guests in the audience room of the castle alongside her son Robin, who is actively breastfeeding despite being way too old for it. The look on everyone's faces says it all. Not only is it cringeworthy enough to make audiences feel like throwing themselves out the moon door, we're pretty sure that's edging into abuse territory. Fortunately, a prosthetic boob was used for the scene. I want to see the bad man fly. Number 11, the mountain kills his horse. A commonly used method for giving a character official bad guy status is to demonstrate their negative attitude towards animals. This is generally done with a simple dislike of dogs or some other villainous spurn, but when you're talking about Sir Gregor the Mountain Clegane, 
everything is over the top. In the ultimate rage quit, after losing a joust to Sir Loras Tyrell, he kills his mount with a blow from his greatsword. Poor horse! The disturbing death and poor sportsmanship is something of a buzzkill for the joust spectators. Of course, it wouldn't be the last shocking death at the hands of the mountain. Stop this madness in the name of your Let him go! Number 10. Cersei, Jamie, and pushing Bran out the window. Are you completely mad? He saw us. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. He saw us! I heard you the first time. The very first episode had a lot of characters to establish, and it did a fantastic job of highlighting personalities while setting the tone for the coming season. We first see Bran as a curious and adventurous little boy, really too curious for his own good. After climbing up an abandoned tower at Winterfell, he comes across a startling scene. The queen and her twin brother making the beast with two backs. Jaime stops him from running off and decides to resolve the matter by pushing the boy out the window. The surprising scene set up the no one is safe theme that the show became famous for. Fortunately, Bran survives, but ew, Lannisters, ew. The things I do for love. <laughs> Number 9. Oberyn Martell's Death don't leave me alone in this world. Never. By season four, audiences were starting to feel like they'd seen it all. The hardened viewers had watched their favorite characters die off or just disappear, endured scenes of torture and betrayal, breathlessly and patiently awaited the army of the dead, and then this happened. Say it! <laughs> Even those who had read the scene in the book and knew what was coming were shocked by the graphic nature of the moment. To be honest, Eladia Sand's scream was all of us. We knew not to get too attached to any one character, but seriously, this is audience abuse. <laughs> Number 8. Masande's Death Masande is one of Daenerys' closest advisors and friends. So when she's captured, Daenerys, as well as her lover Grey Worm, are quite upset. Queen Cersei demands Daenerys' unconditional surrender. If she refuses, Missandei of Nath will die here and now. During the ensuing standoff at King's Landing, Missandei is displayed atop the wall. Despite Tyrion's best efforts to talk Cersei down, Cersei ultimately decides to have Missandei executed in front of the two people who love her the most, one of whom has a dragon. Missandei's final word, Dracarys, proves to be the last word on King's Landing. But more on that soon. Dracarys! What made the scene too much was the gratuitous nature of the death, as well as the fact that the show reduced one of its most prominent and enduring side characters to a cheap plot device. Number 7. Cersei's Walk of Atonement She has confessed her sins and begged for forgiveness. To demonstrate her repentance, she will cast aside all pride, all artifice, and present herself as the gods made her to you. Ruthless, manipulative, and ambitious though she is, Cersei's motivation is her family, and she will do anything for her children. When she's unable to control the monster she created and the High Sparrow, she's charged with high treason, fornication, and incest, among other things. As atonement, she's forced to walk naked and dirty, head shaved, back to the Red Keep, pelted with garbage and curses all the way. Considering that her charges were actually no worse than things most other characters in the show have done, and she's the only one to be publicly humiliated for it, it's hard not to feel a little sorry for the cruel queen. <laughs> it's good to have you back. Number 6. Theon's Torture Where am I? Who are you? Of all the terrible character journeys, Theon has perhaps had it the worst. One could argue that he brought it on himself, betraying Rob, killing innocent children, his clumsy capture of Winterfell and beheading of Sir Roderick, but seriously, Karma, this might be overkill. Over the course of multiple episodes in season three, Theon is brutally tortured. The barbaric scenes do not let up, and there's just something so horrible about someone frantically begging for mercy. It is deeply disturbing. Of course, when you think it can't get worse, Theon is viciously castrated. Tortured both physically and psychologically, Theon becomes a husk of his former self, and audiences were left shaken. What? 
is your name? <laughs> Number five, The Red Wedding. This is perhaps the most infamous scene in the entire series. After the death of Eddard Stark, it looked like Rob was on track to avenge his father and take the North back as its own kingdom. Having never lost a battle, the young wolf seemed unstoppable, despite making a few little miscalculations along the way. Michelle Fairley's powerful performance only ratchets up the tension until the final brutal cut. To this day, the haunting refrain of the reigns of Castamere remains the melody of treachery and defeat. The king in the north arises. <laughs> the abrupt end to the king in the north storyline shocked fans everywhere and left viewers wondering upon whom they should pin their hopes moving forward. Mother. The Lannisters send their regards. <laughs> Number four, the fate of Shireen Baratheon. Here is now, my lord. To you we offer up this girl, that you may cleanse her with your fire, and that its light may lead our way. Please, no, please, let me see my One of the only truly innocent characters in the show, Shireen Baratheon, the only child of Stannis Baratheon, is sweet and kind to everyone she meets. As Stannis' bid for the throne continues to falter, Melisandre convinces him that the Lord of Light requires a sacrifice. Brought to the pyre, Shireen dies seeing her mother and father do nothing to save her, despite her heartbreaking pleas for help. Her mother, Selyse, belatedly tries to take it back, but it's far too late. It's one of the hardest scenes to watch in the entire series, and we were more than happy to see Stannis meet Brienne in the very next episode. Go on, do your duty. Number 3. Daenerys Burns King's Landing the final battle against Cersei sees Danny use her dragon to deadly effect, taking down the armies outside the gates and destroying the huge ballistae atop them. However, the plan is that if the city rings the bells to surrender, then she'll stand down. They ring and Daenerys decides to burn King's Landing anyway. Granted, her rage and propensity for violence have always been a part of her character, and Missandei's final words certainly hit her hard. But many fans still felt like Danny's transition from the Breaker of Chains to the Burner of Children was far too abrupt to feel natural. Number 2. Jamie's actions towards Cersei following Joffrey's death. Please give the Queen a moment alone with her son. Yes, Lord. All of you. Finally returned to King's Landing after a long captivity, Jamie finds Cersei in the Great Sept of Baelor mourning the death of their son Joffrey. His comfort soon turns aggressive as he begins to force intercourse despite Cersei telling him to stop. The scene is even worse when you know that in the book, the sex is consensual. The gratuitous scene caused a huge uproar among fans, with showrunners and producers doing some major damage control after the episode aired, claiming it was bad editing and camera work that made it look like the intended consensual sex was assault. Right. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. What happens to Sansa on her wedding night? Oh, no, no, no. You stay here, Rick. You watch. It's been widely noted that Game of Thrones has a problem when it comes to sexual portrayals of women. In a show that is well cast with many excellent female characters, by season 5 it was apparent that there was a disproportionate and increasing rate of assaults against them. To throw up hands and say, well, that's just the story, is not good enough or accurate, and audiences finally reached a breaking point with what Sansa Stark had to endure. This part is also not in the book. The showrunners literally wrote in an audibly graphic scene for no apparent reason. 
and then they have the gall for Sansa to reflect on it like it made her a better person. What? Without Littlefinger and Ramsay and the rest, I would have stayed a little bird all my life. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.